Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're starting out with this card. Can you see that? Is that showing okay? Yes. Okay. So I just I decided on the single layer I would still do a little bit of a of a tweak on it because it doesn't mean that you have to just use your stencils like over the whole thing. I use this foliage stencil on this. Let me get it out of here. If I can find a way. There we go. And um, you can see what it looks like. And I just, I just layered it here. You know, I did one layer and then I decided I needed another layer. So I masked off that layer and did another layer. But I just wanted to do this as a single layer to, to encourage you that you don't always have to make it like the full card. You can, you know, be a little bit, give yourself some leeway about how to use it. So that's the only way, reason I made that card was just to say, here's a way to do a single layer of stenciling. And I love that bird. So, um, and I did 3D embossing on the outside edges. And that's that. But I wanted to show you, I wanted to talk for a minute about just how we prep to do stenciling because there's some people in here who are brand new. And, um, and so we'll just go over the basics for a minute. So I have my piece of cardstock cut and then on the back, I just did tape all the way around. Now I did tape on this one because this stencil is pretty thick and pretty even all the way across. And I think that it's gonna hold down fine. But if I were gonna do this stencil, that's really fine and has a whole lot of little spaces and the little pieces of plastic are really thin, I would use pixie spray on it. Do you guys use this? Or another light tack spray? For a while, pixie spray, it was so hard to find, but now it's coming back available everywhere. Well, you know, it's weird for me because um, <laughs> it's really hard in Alaska because, you know, they, get, they have it on Amazon and everything. But um, here, they will not ship anything that's an aerosol spray or that has alcohol in it to Alaska. So if you try to order it online anywhere and it and and have them ship it to you, it will say, um, you know, we cannot ship this product to Alaska. And we don't have a lot of craft stores. So it kind of limits you. I have found that Simon Says Stamp will ship to Alaska some things that I couldn't get anywhere else. But um, I don't remember where I got this, but I got a few at a time just because I finally found somewhere I could get it. Does anybody else use this or have experience with this? And what do you think of it? I use it frequently. I like it. Works really, really well. I've okay. even used it to tack underneath a piece of paper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do have a question for you, though, because I do use this on everything that's fine, for sure. Um, but when I wash my stencils, I have trouble getting it off. Does somebody have a wonderful way to get the what's remaining of this on the back of the stencil off? No. I've heard that hand sanitizer helps. Well, I do use hand sanitizer for some alcohol products, so maybe it would. I haven't tried it yet. I'm anyway, not sure I thought myself. maybe one of you would have a magic answer to that, but I, I use it anyway, even if I can't get it off, because... It really works well and helps you not get your ink, you know, someplace that you don't want to get it underneath the stencil plastic. So for you people who are new, um, there's links to all the, there's links to everything and everywhere. So, so you don't have to worry about it. It's called Pixie Spray. So anyway, let's go back to this one. I'm going to put this piece of paper under here. It's just a piece of scratch paper. But um, so I tape it around and then oftentimes I also will just tape it straight to 
I'm not used to working with this because I work on a glass surface and I can just tape it straight to the glass surface. But um, I use this black surface for filming. Okay, so we want to make it as stable as possible. So that means taping your cardstock to the to the stencil, and then most of the time I'll just go ahead and tape the stencil down too, and just give it a nice flat surface. So I was going to talk about different ways, different implements to use to stencil. And for a big stencil like that, I usually use my blending brush, which I really like these blending brushes. Um, and do you guys use those too? Is, is that one of your favorite things or what do you like to use? I use the blending brushes, they're really nice. Yeah. Yes. I like the brushes. You want I to use I use the, all the uh, alternate brushes, small ones, mm -hmm. tiny ones. Yeah, and see, I've got these small ones and then the tiny, tiny ones, these little teeny ones. Yes. And that's now what they I have, have these other new ones that are this size. So yes. as you can tell, I haven't used it yet. I got these while my daughter was sick, so I haven't even tried using them yet, but they're they're the new size. So um, if I'm gonna do a big stencil, I just, I use these. And you wanna tap off your ink on the side and kind of start from the side and just work over. And these work so well that it's so easy to do. And just like blending, you wanna, you wanna start out light and add, add your color in layers because you, you can always add, you can't take away. So, so that's just super easy to do. If you have a smaller area, again, you can use, no, get down. Um, you can you use a little one, one, which these are super handy, or you can use your regular old um, blending pads like this that also work. Um, what I was going to say is that, um, oh shoot, I don't have a blank one of these, but if you use this, sometimes these are better on really fine stencils like this, because if you try to do a blending brush across, it can still lift up these little things. So with these, you can kind of pounce like this. And it will, if you just go up and down and you don't go rubbing, it will keep the, um, the ink within the little, little spaces, especially on these really fine ones. Sometimes that will work or using a little brush like this, you can also do that. I know most of us know this, but we need to cover it just because there are people who are new. So with this, I can still do this, but if I needed to, I can like do like a pouncing and kind of um, not do big wide movements. So it's really simple. And then sometimes I resort to um, finger daubers if it's a really small space or if I'm using multiple colors and you can do it that way too. And it gives you a little bit different uh, look and you can look at how much darker that is just in a single space. So you can do a lot of the things with this too. We forget about these, they've been around forever, but they're also really handy on stencils. So it just kind of depends what stencil you're using, how big of a pattern it is, and what you're wanting to do with it if you want to color different stripes, whatever, blend through it. Um, you know, I think the bottom line is you have to adapt your, your um, I started to say instruments because I, I'm not sure exactly what the right word is, probably tools, but I'm used to the dental world and my husband would just get really mad if anybody called his instruments tools. So <laughs> I'm used to calling everything an instrument. Well, not, I don't wanna make it sound like he had a temper tantrum. It's just they're instruments, not tools. Okay, so I didn't want to spend too long on that, but is everybody pretty clear on all that? 
Yes, and that was very helpful, the pouncing, because I have a couple um, of stencils that I was running into that problem where it would snag it. Mm -hmm. So that was, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I found that that pouncing really helps on really where it snags like that with those really fine little ones. Uh -huh. It works really well. So same principles, we're going to go on to a double double stencils. I have a few cards to show you. Now, can you see how that happens? Can that happen indoors? I can't hear you, honey. Is that Joanne talking? The pixie spray? Yeah. Yeah, the pixie oh, well, that, spray. Oh. Can that be no, indoors? I, I, if I use it very sparingly, I do do it indoors. Um, but I do have okay. a spray box. I have a fan going. And I have, you know, a spray box that I use for, for spraying anything in. And... Um, if I use a lot of spray or heavy duty spray of any sort, I do it outside. But um, you, yeah, you okay, do have to be careful, you. but I don't find that pixie spray is a problem. It's mostly when I'm working with alcohol that I have issues. And I do have sitting right here somewhere, I have my uh, official mask to wear if I think it's going to be oh. a issue. <laughs> So, yeah, this is that medical grade mask, yeah. you know, okay. so I, uh, I try to be really careful about that. Thank you for asking, Joanne. That was a great question. Okay. I often, excuse me, I often good, open up good. the window the screen and stick my hand out and spray it outside, mm -hmm. but I don't go outside. That's a good idea, too. It's a little <laughs> bit cold up here sometimes to be going out outside. It's supposed to be down to 12 tonight, I think, overnight. So anyway, Ooh, we're moving on to two layers. Nice. So this is so fun to do, two layers. So you see there's the large stencil, which I used this stencil for. And then I used, right, where is it? The tool stencil over it. So what you do is you lay your cardstock down. Let me get an extra piece of cardstock over here if I can get one. Okay. You lay your cardstock down. You do your first stencil just like you would normally do. So I did this one with a light pink. That's one of the keys. You want to use a lighter color on the big stencil first. Whatever stencil you use, if you're going to layer two, use the stencil that has the bigger holes first with a lighter color. Then you keep that stencil there and you come in with the second stencil and you layer it like that. And then you do the second stencil with a darker color. Does that make sense? Mm. Yep. You do the yes. first stencil with a lighter pink, let's say, since I did this in pink a more pastel pink through the big stencil, then you leave it there. And then you put the smaller stencil over the top and do a darker color. Now, what happens when you do that is that the darker spots only go in where the bigger stencil is on the petals there. They don't go in between. So it looks really cool. What do you think? Beautiful. That is yeah. really nice. So you want to experiment with some larger, larger stencils that you may have with a little smaller stencil. So here's another one. With a little here's another one that I use. Yes, Joanne. That's right. That's right. Oh, you're cutting out again. Oh darn. <laughs> I can still see you. I can hear you. Okay. You can hear me? I can see you and I can hear you. I'm still, oh boy. Is anybody else having problems hearing me? No, no I can Not hear you, Sandy. Oh, you can? Okay. All right. 
I can hear you fine also, Sandy. Joanne's microphone sounds like it's crackling. That's what I can't hear Joanne either. So um, Joanne, if you have a question and we can't hear you, go ahead and, and put it in the chat because Penny will read it and then she'll ask it. Oh, <laughs> oh you can hear me, good, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. <laughs> I, did the, I did this one with this stencil as the bigger one. This is the, what is it? It's the sunburst stencil. So in this one I did it and I did like a light, like a light orange, a light lavender, a light yellow, a light turquoise. And then I came in with the feeling dotty stencil. I love that name. I'm feeling dotty today. And I put it over that, I put it over the stencil and you can't really see through it, but then I did a darker purple, a darker orange, darker aqua, a darker yellow in those sections. And you can see the little dots in the sections, I think. Can you see that? That's, that's really nice. So I was just having fun Very playing pretty. with that layering stencils. It's just kind of a fun thing to do when you have, you know, um, when you have two layers, um, it just kind of adds a little oomph to a stencil. You know what I'm saying? Now it's a nice one. option. Nice option to be able to use too. Yeah. Now this one, I just thought it would be kind of fun to mix a floral with a grid. So I used the grid stencil and then I used this rose bouquet stencil. So I put the rose bouquet first. For some reason, I don't have the grid stencil here, but I did the light lavender and green. I did, I used um, little brushes, the little brushes, or I think even the tinier brushes to be able to put green on the leaves and lavender in the, in the flowers. And then I put the, the, um, grid stencil over it and made just kind of a grid pattern in the flowers just for fun. So it just kind of gives it texture and makes it look different. What do you guys think of that? Pretty, Somebody's very holding pretty. something up and I can't see what it, oh, that's pretty. Nice. That's so pretty. Um, what do you guys think, this idea? Oh, I love it. I love it's really it. nice idea. It's just kind of a, you know, the whole concept of this of this stencil thing isn't because it's so complicated. It's because we want to be able to use them in versatile ways and not always just do the same thing. So that's the concept. We could also blend the ink in here and do a lot of other things, but this double stenciling is kind of fun. Now I'll show you the one I didn't make into a card, the one that I started with for this pattern. And I thought, I'm always using purple and blue. I'm gonna use some other colors. So I did this and I took a look at it and I thought it looks like I made some waffles in the flowers. So to me, it I looks like pretty it looks though. Like waffles. So I thought it's pretty. I'm not sure that I want to blend waffles and flowers together. So I I didn't make a card out of it because I thought, well, I'm not so sure that's a winning combination. But you know, you don't know until you Oh, it looks nice. You think so? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, I, I, I really do. All I, is, all I see is I should put syrup on the top of it. <laughs> well, I, see, I, I don't see that at all. Why don't you third stencil and put it on top of that still, and the third stencil could change the waffle. That's, That's true. So true, Penny, and that leads me into the third one, which is three layers, and I don't think you guys are going to be able to see all three layers on this very well. But I did this Mandela thing with all three. And so um, I used uh, I used the one that I used over here. Let me pull it out again. The sunburst one. I used um, this one, which is the leaf burst. I think I did the sunburst first. Then I did the leaf burst. And then I did this one over the top. 
And so it looks like, what? Somebody's asking, what color have you been using for the grid? Um, different ones. Um, on, well, you know, I just, I'm using all to new colors. So I think um, I did the background on this in like um, Wisteria. And then I did um, the grid in, um, in Hydrangea. You know, I used to say, and I think this is uh, um, Forest Glades and what's the one that goes with it? Um, Braid Leaf and Forest Glades. I just used okay. the same color families, the lighter right. color, and then the next one up. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome, honey. You're so this one, I, I just wanted to kind of have that Mandela look. And... Um, so, so it's really kind of cool, actually, when you're looking at it in person, but I don't think you see the lavender layer too well where you are. But this is three stencils on top of each other. So I layered, let me just oh, lavender. Here. I layered this one first, the leaf burst one or sunburst one. And I put a light and I did it with light blue. And then I left it there. And then I did the leaf burst on top of this with a darker blue. And I know it's really hard to see on camera, but you can see where they overlap. And I made it so that the center, both of these have centers that I layered the center over each other. Oh, yeah. And the third one, I used this one, which I've actually never used before, which is henna square, because it has a circle in the middle too. And I put the circle right over the top and I did lavender on this. And if I had to do it again, I would do it with a darker purple because the lavender doesn't show up very well. But that was a learning lesson for me. But in reality, the pattern looks really cool on the it is. part itself. Nice. The layering. So it's so you can see down here the light blue, the dark blue, and then you can see that lavender, but I would use a darker purple next time um to do it your lavender your lavender background brings out the lavender in the middle card well part. that's why i put the lavender background because i thought <laughs> maybe it will uh maybe it will help it a little bit but still you know i mean i'm not trying to say these are the most awesome cards anybody has ever made there's lots of flaws but the concept behind it is is that you can layer even three or who knows how many um, and get some really cool patterns and colors together that are far more effective than just doing one layered stencil. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just gives you such a different and depth and um, texture that you don't get otherwise. And I specifically chose these because they all have that center um, you know, they were all focused around a center design like that so that I could easily layer these three centers up together. There's a center of this one just as blank, but putting them like that and getting them all centered together and have kind of this great burst coming out of there. So, um, so anyway, I mean, who's to say you couldn't even try one with four layers and see what happens. I don't know, but I'm I'm just want to expand your thinking, and it doesn't always have to be just a stencil. You can layer them up and get different um, different looks from that. So moving right along, we're going to move into something different. And now on this one, this was so much fun to do. And this one is masking and using a stencil with a mask. So what I did was I first started with my cardstock like this, and then I took some thin washi tape, and that's these lines here. These, these look thick lines here, but it's really with this exact thickness of washi. And I just masked off a pattern on here mm. on my, you know, like this. You that's find cool. It. So I just masked it off. Oops, come on washi tape. You know, like this, just in any old pattern you wanna do. 
you know, like that, whatever pattern you want. Usually it works well with like five sections or like this. That's a good, that's a good use for all those washi tapes we may yeah. never use. <laughs> Exactly. I don't know where I want this one to go. I don't want them all coming off of the same place. Let's see. How about we do that like that? And then we'll do one more. Okay. I like that look, though. That's cool. It's just kind of a geometric design, you know? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Definitely so one of a kind. You do that, and then you take your... I use the geometric landscape landscape stencil and you put you attach your stencil just like you always would just with the, the tape and everything like you normally just, would and it's just layered over there so you can neat. see how that worked here yeah it's layered over the top and then yeah. you attach your your stencil the same way and then you ink every section a different color based on whatever colors you want to do. And I wanted to show you guys, I'm thinking most of you were at the color theory, weren't you? Probably some of you were yes. not. But remember yes. when we mm -hmm. looked at this book that of all the color palettes that I had printed out? Mm -hmm. This notebook? Well, when yes. I was deciding to do this, I thought, wouldn't it be fun just to pick out a color palette out of my notebook? So I went to my oh, notebook and I picked cool. this palette here. You see that? Wow, well, it worked so, out good. And so what I did, just to tell you so that we can, I, I want to make sure that, you know, our lessons don't just go off into oblivion and we never look at them again. So I took this and I took my color swatches from Altenew and I said, okay, where does this match? Oh, well, look at here, this and this. Can you see that? Yes. In real life, this matches this. So this is Coral Bliss. And then I just, you know, went around with these swatches and pulled all of my colors that I used in this from matching the swatches to this so that they would all go together. And it turned out great. Yeah, it's beautiful. So remember to look up color palettes when you want to and, and, um, and, and use them creatively because they're there to help you. Because otherwise I would have gotten confused. I was a little bit upset in the end that this color and this color look um, next to each other, they look too similar. Whereas th these three colors are actually three different colors of ink. And you can see it in person different, but I'm not sure you can there. But anyway, all I did was take each of these sections and take, you know, a small brush and ink each section in a different color. And then when you're done with the inking, you just take off the tape and it leaves the white stripes. So it's just fun. And then I decided on, on the edging that I would just do a colored edging around there with all the inks. I took a plain piece of white cardstock of the, um, uh, for the background panel. And I just used the ink cubes and colored around all the different inks I used to make a little bit of a different colored background. What do you think? I love it. Very pretty. And do you guys understand how to do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can use masking. The, the thing is, is that I did it with, I did it with washi tape. It does not have to be geometric. You can take masking paper. And I have another example later on where uh, I actually took this cover die and cut this out of masking paper and put it on my cardstock and actually used this, made a, made a mask out of this, this die. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say how to do that? Yes, yes, I do. Right? So I take a piece of masking paper, I run it through with this die through my through my die cutting machine, and it comes out like this, like an outline. 
And then I take the backing off the masking paper and put it on my cardstock and it, and it, this sticks to the cardstock just like the washi tape does. Then you can color in different areas of this. And if you wanted to lay another stencil over the top and do the same kind of thing, right? So it's the principle, not the actual exactly how it looks. It's the principle of laying down a mask, putting a stencil over it, and then seeing what you get from it. Actually, I was going to do this for a card for this, but what can I say? You know, with my daughter and everything, I didn't get everything made that I wanted to get made. So hopefully you can understand the explanation. Yes. The Sunday. You yes. know the greeting on that, thank you, friend. Is that has that got vellum in the background? It does have vellum in the background. I yeah, cut that's out really the, pretty. Can you see that? I don't know if you can, but it has yeah. a background vellum. I'm not yeah, sure that really that was nice. the best choice for this because it does in person though you see it really well, but on the camera yeah. you don't see it all that well. You can see it, yeah. It's lovely. But I didn't want to overwhelm that busy background with a colored sentiment. I could have used black, but that seemed a little bit too harsh. So that's what my thinking was behind it. I think it turned out pretty good. And then for this, I always, do you guys do this? When I die cut these things, I lose the dots from the eyes. I try to keep every little piece. <laughs> But the die cut went missing, so I just used a little white enamel dot on there for the dot. I don't know if you can see that or not. They're known to evaporate. <laughs> Aren't they? It's just like, it's like socks, right? Where you only have the one come out of the dryer and you swear you put two in there. Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway, is everybody pretty clear on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the next thing is is ink shifting, is, sh is shifting the stencil. So here's my example of that. And I can you see the, I did a debossing and I don't know if it shows. I don't know how to get it to show. Can you see those little dots in there? It shows. Does it show? Yeah, yeah. when it's farther back. Yes. I, did, I did a debossing on there because I thought that it needed some extra oomph to give some more texture. And it looks really pretty in the, um, nice. in reality. But I use this stencil. So what I did, and again, this is so easy, but you know, just to go through all these different ways we can do it. I, um, I took this stencil, which is the, what is it? Teeny heart stencil. And you can see the hearts alternate different ways anyway, but they're spaced quite a bit apart. So I inked it this way with one color ink. And then I shifted it over so that the hearts were in between where they were before. So if we put it down here on the card, let's see if I can find, you know, it's also different. It's hard to find. I think I did it three times. I changed them around. Let's see if I can find the right ones. It's hard to do. All right, let's see here. But I put them down like this and inked it. And then I shifted it. And then I shifted it again because there's room for three and I used three different color inks. I think I used baby pink and fuchsia and magenta. And so it comes out just instead of being widely spaced like these are, it just comes out with these patterns of all of them going different directions and it looks a lot more interesting. It came out nicely. Well, you can do this on anything. As long as there's big spaces, you can shift it over and make your own pattern in between the patterns that are on here. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yes. So I thought this stencil was really, really lent itself to that. And it's so plain when you just do it once, but then when you shift it over and do it again and then shift it up or wherever and put it in another empty space and do it again with three different colors, it really comes out looking really pretty. And it's so easy to do. There's nothing to do. You just shift the stencil over 
in a different area and voila. In fact, I was noticing afterwards, it kind of makes these little circles of, of, see that like little pattern there of with a space in the middle, these? Yeah. And I didn't plan it that way. It just kind of came out looking that way. You so, lined it up just right. Well, it's easy to do. It's so easy because you just you just put it down and here's like, here's a pink. Here's one that went right through there. And then I just shifted it like up to there and did it yeah. in a different color and then shifted it like over here and did it in a different color. So it's super easy. And so that's shifting. Let me get caught up here on my handouts. That stencil shifting, but now it's stencil rotating, which is basically the same thing, just a little different. So here's one of those cards. Now I used, That's one, nice. I used one stencil on this, this stencil. And let's see, I started with it going this way. No, this way, and I did it in a light yellow. And then I rotated it this way and did it in a darker yellow so that they over, so they made a plaid, a curved plaid. So all I did was rotate the stencil and then use it as a backing for my focal point. What do you think? Nice. Do you understand? Very how pretty. Play? You can do it with any stencil. You know, again, these are just principles. These are not, these are not like set in stone with this stencil or anything. You can do whatever stencil you want. This still has, this still has pixie spray on the back of it. So it's kind of <laughs> to my thing here. So I just put it down like this and inked it this way going up. And then I flipped it this way and inked it this way going up with a different color. So they the lines intersected that way. And I think it turned out really nice. I really am happy with this color. And it's a pretty card. And then this down the sides here on the back panel is actually washi tape. It's thicker washi tape. You can see how oh, it's wow. over the back, but it's it's actually a washi oh. tape that matches one of the inks. It's an alternate washi tape. Yes. So, I'm I'm real happy with the That's way this, cool. this turned out. But can you see how cool that is to overlap? And you can do it, you can do it with any stencil. It doesn't make any difference what what stencil you use. Just think about okay, if I have my pattern going this direction, I'm gonna flip it and go this direction. And on top of each other with a different ink, it makes plaids and all kinds of fun things. Very sure. That are interesting and not just the plain background, you know. So very that cool. Okay, now this one was just a crazy idea. I wanted to see what would happen. This is also rotating. Now, can you see in the middle the plaid pattern of it rotate of how it makes that kind of star plaid? Yes. In the blue. Can you see that has lines going all sorts of ways? Yes. Okay, well, this was a total experiment, but I had fun doing it. I decided to try um, either somebody saying something to me or they have their mic on and I'm not sure which it is. Okay, let's see. I actually used the spear stencil for this. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if I did this stencil rotating business with this. So I, I didn't change ink colors. I just did the ink across this way, which made lines this way. And then I shifted it 90 degrees and did the ink down this way. And then I thought, you know, I think I'm gonna do diagonal. So I went this way and then I went that way. So this actually has four layers of rotated rotated lines but the thing is is that these lines are not even they're kind of thicker and thinner in different places so it makes the plaid be really kind of like you can't really tell how i did that it's really strange 
but it and looks really nice. I wasn't even going to use it, but then I thought, well, I don't know. It's kind of cool looking, so I made it into a card. It so is. I don't know what you think about that, but then you can experiment with pretty much anything. It's and see very what it's gonna, see what it's going to look like. You know, I mean, you just never know. Just take a take anything and just rotate it and see how what pattern it makes, right? I did a shift with this with white and white pigment ink first, shifted it sideways, and then used uh, a green um, distressed oxide. Oh, that's really pretty. Is that that castle? That is nice. Castle motives. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I recommend that's nice. I'll, I'll be right back. One. Okay. Anyway, so I put this in. Anyway, so I put I made it into a card because I wanted you to see that even your most crazy ideas of, gee, I wonder what that would look like, turn out to be something usable. And you just never know, do you? It's nice. Okay, so let me have a drink here of my water. Okay, the next one, I really like doing this. This is stamping using stamps through a stencil. So what I did, and I'll show you the stencils. Can you see that this is a big rose stencil and then it has little roses in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really pretty. So what I did, same idea as a double stamp. It's just using a, using a I mean, same idea as a double stencil, but it's using a stamp instead. So I used this mega rose stencil for the main stencil and I did it in light pink. And then I used this little teeny stencil, I mean stamp, one of the little mini ones, but it's the only one I had that had small roses on it and I wanted to put roses within roses. So this is just a little teeny stamp, but I did it in my Misty. So I had my Misty, let me get it. And here's what I did. I, I had my card base in here. And I, I actually taped the stencil. Let me get the stencil out of here. I actually taped the stencil right down in my Misty with tape. So it was set in the same place and I taped it all the way around. So then I inked this with the light pink and I left this taped in. Then I took this little guy and even though it meant that I had to stamp it 25 times, I set it here, closed the door, picked it up and then inked it with a dark pink and then stamped it and then wiped it off and then moved it over and did it like six times across because, you know, I wanted to use this little rose stamp. So I, I, you know, if you had a bigger stamp, you wouldn't have to ink it that many times. But anyway, that's what I did. And that's how it turned out. So I was, I just really wanted to try doing a little rose inside a big rose. And I think it turned out really pretty, but you could do it with anything, with any, any uh, stencil that has big areas in it, you can stamp right through it, um, a texture or whatever. However, here's my disclaimer. When I have tried to use some stamps with some stencils, even in my Misty, they something is not thick enough and it only it doesn't stamp evenly across it did just great with this little rose one and this is a really thin stencil so i think you ha you have to experiment so don't get discouraged you try this with something and the stamp doesn't seem to function just try a different combination because it does work but it doesn't work every time and i don't want you to think you're doing something wrong um, you know what I mean? So that's my disclaimer. Was somebody going to comment? Wait. Okay. Does that make sense? 
about stamping through it? Yes, that's, that's a nice way to do it. Okay, so you could try. I see now. I really, really am serious. Somebody try this, and I did a rose. By the way, I did the rose uh, 3D uh, folder on the background embossing folder. So these are roses too. So you know, I just was kind of in one of those rose moods, and then I just put a little love thing on there. But um, I might send that to one of my daughters or whatever. But um, what was I going to say? Just try it. Any big, large stencil with a smaller stamp. You don't want to use a big stamp. You want to use one that's just a little detail stamp, even if it's a big, even if it's a big background stamp. But you want one that's small. Like you could use um, this one that I use on another card. This one with dots. See, this would go on there and. It would stamp dots through this whole thing on, on the background. So, you know, have fun and just experiment. So that's stamping through stencils. So we've done different number of layers of inking. We've done shifting stencils, rotating stencils, stamping through stencils. Who knew, huh? There's so many things. <laughs> Okay, now this one looks really cool and I really love it. It's, let me get this out of the way. This one. Now this one's called reverse inking. And some of you have done this, I'm sure, with some other, without a stencil. But what you do is you take your you take your cardstock and you ink it, ink blender. What? Okay. You ink blend the the paint the cardstock. So I blended it with, you know, blue and purples and pinks. And you want to ink blend it really dark, you know, thick. You don't want it to be pastelly because it doesn't look as good. So you want to make it kind of bright colors. And so you have your ink blended cardstock and you lay your stencil over it and, and attach it just like you normally would. And then you ink the stencil with a dark. You can either use black. Most people use black. I used a charcoal gray on here. I use the... Um, Oh, I forget what it's called. It's the one in the gentleman's spray. It's the darkest one. I think it's graphite, no? Well, I have it on your handout. So this is really a really, really dark gray, but you use black or something very dark and you, and you use the black through the stencil. And then the colored part of your inking shows up afterwards through it. And this is called reverse ink blending on a stencil. I think this looks very cool. Mm. So, um, and different. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like you said, it's very pretty, pretty and different. I think it would be good, uh, maybe not with the pink on it, but with different shades of blue. I think this would make a nice masculine card too, with the black. I was wondering, Sandy, I was wondering what it would look like, or if you've tried it instead of black, if you did white, what would that look like? It's funny you said that because that's what I was just thinking about. I wonder what would happen if you use like white pigment ink. Yes. And stand, and did it through the stencil. Um, I bet that would look really pretty. I oh, you could use gold or silver ink, could you as well? What? That would look nice. Could you, could you use gold or silver ink? Or, and, um, the, yeah. those ink pads. You know what you also could do is, and we're going to talk about it in a, in a few minutes, you could also heat emboss it through that with gold or silver or copper. Um, oh, that would be cool know, too. Use, use embossing ink through the stencil and then heat emboss it with a metallic. That would look, this would look pretty with silver on it, I bet. Yeah. Oh, something new to try, huh? So yeah. this is what I'm thinking though, when, when we're done with this, I really want you guys to get on, if you do Facebook, to get on the Facebook group and 
um, try these things in your own way and let us all see them so we can have a lot more ideas of what to do. Because I think both the white ink and the and the um, heat embossing with this would look really super. So very cool. So I really like this process. I think it's fun. I think it's kind of like that um, when we were in elementary school and used to do crayons all over and then color it up with black crayon and then scrape out a, a yes. design. Does it, is yeah. anybody as old as me and remembers doing that? <laughs> or I used to be an elementary school teacher, so I used to teach kids to do that. But it's it's pretty cool that that uh, bright colors through black. Okay, so now we're going to shift to talking about dry embossing. Is there anybody who doesn't know what dry embossing with a stencil is? Don't be don't be afraid to say yes. I have no idea what you're talking about. But I need to know. That's with the rubber mat, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what it is, is it's putting your stencil, in this case, I, I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see the stencil in the background? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See the pattern? Yeah. And so you can use your stencils just like you use for 3D embossing or any embossing folder. Yeah. I use this one for this. And I just put it on my cardstock. Now, okay, here's the thing. Remember when we did the 3D embossing folders and I said embossing. that the number yeah. one thing for success is finding out the right sandwich for your machine? Remember yes. when I said that? Because yes. every machine's different? Well, this is the same way. You use a sandwich that includes an embossing mat, the soft ones. Let's see if I have mine out here where I can grab it. Like this, you know, like the soft rubber embossing mats. Um, you use one of these in the sandwich, but everybody's machine is different with the sandwiches. And for mine, I have a Gemini Junior and it used to work really well when I used the sandwich that they recommend in their manual. But for some reason it stopped being as effective. So now I have to add another shim in there to get it to work. So I have no idea why it changed. So I'm just saying experiment with what works best and see what your manual says and then just experiment until you can get it to work the way you want it to. But you layer it up in your sandwich, use the embossing mat and you put your cardstock there and you run it through your machine. And then it comes out with a really cool imprint on there that's called dry embossing. And so I, you can use it as a background for your focal point. I really like kind of this arrow pointing to the flowers. I thought that was nice. So I tried that. This is washi tape on the edges for this. I don't know if you can see it. And um, I just sprayed some yellow spray on there and but anyway that dry embossing for a focal point that's is, a beautiful card thanks sweetie i appreciate you saying that can i ask you sandy when you use um washi tape on the edges like that uh -huh. can you have raw edges or do you have to fold them over inside something well, i didn't know if they ever like peel up um I have used the really fine gold washi on the edges, um, but that was before they had the whiter gold washi. So let me show you. Um, okay, I have this set that are wide and I like using those because of that. On that, on the, this one that has, this is what I used on this card. Mm-hmm. And it's thin. And guess what? I taped it on the back. With, you did. Yeah. See how it's taped down? Yes. Because the edges come right to there. And okay. I just took some of my low tech tape because I'm going to put it on a card base. So, you know, I taped the back so that it wouldn't flip up. But okay. I like using the lighter <laughs> ones. Huh? So you should secure the washi tape. If it's thin. Yeah, okay. I would. 
because you. now they have i've been collecting washi tape for years so don't don't get surprised here at how much washi tape i have <laughs> <laughs> now they have these wider ones See, I used to put this on the edge and then I'd have that same problem because I don't mm -hmm. like leaving a, a raw edge and, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of too thin. But now they have these thicker ones that, and of course, in these in these classes, I'm only using wash Altenew stuff. So, you know, but it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was going to do next spring a class on just tons of ways to use washi on cards. Do you, would you be interested in that? I yes. Would love that. Yes. Okay. yes. Then, have, then I will plan it in the spring. In January, you know, I told you that I'm taking the rest of November and December off. I have to make my own Christmas cards and I'm trying to focus on our family thing for the holidays. But January, we'll do the second half of stencils and then I'll do washi as one of the things I do after that. Does that, does that appeal to you? Yes. yes. Okay, because I have lots of ways to use uh, to use all these all this washi tape and give you some ideas. But anyway, that's the answer to that. I prefer using a wider one because then and and so I use these quite a bit. And the reason I use these is because they're inked. They're linked to the Altenew inks. And so like that yellow one that I had earlier that I said the edge was plain, this one. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. That I said was plain washi. Wait a minute. They're all stuck together. It, it's, I think, I think it's the one in between these two and I must have put it on a different folder, but it's one of these. Mm -hmm. And then see, it's just a nice width to fold over um, and make a nice edge for your card. So I really prefer using those. But on this one, I really liked the concept of having a little, a little pattern on the washi. You can see it's kind of got a little dotted orange pattern. Mm -hmm. And this one here, and I thought, mm -hmm. I really like the look of that. So I just decided to make do and tape it over the back. Great question. That's, that's, um, I like using washi on the edges because I think it looks finished and I think it puts an edging on the card and I just like the look of it. I don't know, it's just my thing. So dry embossed, did that answer your question okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. So the next one is, I like this card a lot too, is this one. This uses that castle motifs. Oh, I love and that. Now, can you see how it's raised? It's dry embossed, the pattern of the stencil. I don't know if you can see that it's raised up off the this yes. raised pattern. So what I did was I started with colored cardstock and I, I, I put the, I put the, um, Good. The stencil on my colored cardstock, and I used I Nimbus. I used Nimbus ink, and, and I, it, no, and I lost the sound. Oh, okay. uh oh, somebody lost the sound. So can you turn your microphone off? That would be great. Okay. Um, oh, I put the stencil onto the colored cardstock. This color, this is colored cardstock. It's not inked. I just like this color, so. I put it, put the stencil on the cardstock, and I just inked through the stencil the same normal way with some Nimbus, um, Nimbus colored ink. And I left it on there, taped and everything after I inked it, and I put it through my um, my uh, die cutting machine and dry embossed it. So the effect is that. Um, where I inked it, it's raised up and dry embossed. Can you see that now? That's Beautiful. a great look. Yeah. That's the perfect match then, isn't it? Because the, sometimes they didn't line up, but that makes it a perfect match. It, it makes it a perfect match. So it ends yeah. up looking fabulous. Anything That's a really floral, pretty card. Anything floral will look terrific with this. And I could have inked the background, but I had this color cardstock and I just thought the color combination 
went together really well. And what I did was I, I inked the sides of the, the back panel just with an ink cube that matches this. And that was that. Very nice. But anyway, I love yeah. the look of this. It, it almost looks like an engraving, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. a, like a etched engraving kind of a thing. It's very rich looking. So I think, you know, that might look pretty too if you did it with the metallic, like a gilding polish through the stencil or something and then did it. Oh. Anyway, yeah. so that, That's so we did the, um, we did the just plain dry embossing on the background, which was this one where we just did it on the white background just for the pattern of it being raised. This one we inked through the stencil and then dry embossed it. And now this one is another dry emboss, but I did it differently. Now, does anybody know what I did to do this? Oh. <laughs> okay, so what I did with this is I used this leaf stencil. I actually have another, here it is, just dry embossed on there. Maybe you can see it, see? Mm -hmm. I had it for something else. But here's what you do with this. You take your stencil and you take your piece of cardstock and you ink the back of your stencil. So you just take your ink cube and just or whatever you want, blending brush, whatever, and you ink on the stencil. Now, what I did was I did like three colors of green. I don't know if you can see the yes. variation in the colors there. I inked it with lighter green in the middle and then a medium green and then a darker green out to the edge. But you put your ink on the stencil, not in between, on the stencil. Okay, is everybody clear with that? You put your ink on here. You Spritz it with some water to activate the ink, and then you flip it over Make on your paper <laughs> like that so that the ink is on, the, on top of the paper. Do you I need to play that again? I got it. You take the back side of your stencil, you put ink on it, however way you want to do it. This one has a lot of little pieces, so I kind of just dabbed my ink, uh, my little ink cubes on there. You know, I just took like, here's an ink cube. And I just dabbed. Did you, it. did you brayer over it or anything? You're I making just, a print. I, I just dabbed it like that. And then I took some water. In a minute, I don't want to spray too much. Hold on. like that over the whole thing. And then you take it and you turn it upside down on your cardstock. Okay? Wow. You tape it down and you don't do anything. You just leave it there and tape it down. And then you put it in your sandwich and run it through your die cut machine to dry emboss it. And this is what it turns out. It looks kind of water colored. Um, wow. And the, it, it's just a different look. I think it's it very cool. so perfect. It looks cool, doesn't it? Beautiful. But what it is, is that you're not, you're not now see if I pull this up, you can kind of see where it's making that pattern. But when you dry emboss it, it forces it through the die cutting machine. So it forces the ink down into the paper. So these mm -hmm. are actually rather than being raised to their kind of they kind of are um, embossed in there in a lowered pattern kind of a thing, like a debossed kind of thing. Debossed, yeah. Andy, that, did you wait till your ink dried before no, you ran it through? No, but I, what I did do was I put another piece of paper, like typing paper, or listen to me, On typing top. paper. Oh boy, that's just <laughs> amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay, like copy paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah okay so what I did is I put another piece of paper over it so if any of the ink squeezed out it wouldn't get onto any of my 
you know, my die cutting machine, right? Okay. So, so just to make sure, but you know, here's the thing, none of the ink squeezed out. It all went cool. into the paper. That cool. is amazing. And you can see how that looks even right there without any pressure, but when it puts pressure on it, it ends up looking kind of watercolory. Mm -hmm. And uh, dapples like that. Isn't that That's cool? a pretty look. I love so we did three kinds of dry embossing with stencils. We did the first one, which was just the arrow pointing to the flower that was just on the white, just to give it a little texture and a little bit of, of dimension on the card as a background for, for a focal point. Then we did yeah. the gray blue one where we actually stenciled through or inked through the stencil and then ran it through to dry emboss it. And it all raised up in that beautiful pattern. And then we did this one where we inked the back of the stencil, sprayed it with a little water, flipped it over, and then ran that through. So that's three ways of dry embossing with stencils. Does that make sense yeah. to everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. See why I started to say we were going to do embossing, um, embossing paste next time because we're still rolling here and we, <laughs> we have <laughs> lots to go here. Okay, you've seen this card before. Those of you who have been in other uh, workshops, I've used it for some other things, but now we're moving on to 3D embossing. So with this one, this was so easy to do and it looks really good in person. All I did was I inked through my, this is the Poppy Bloom stencil. I had it on white cardstock. I inked it just like normal. And then I just ran it through with the 3D. This is the um, Mod Squares 3D um, embossing folder. And it put that pattern on it and it just looks fabulous. It adds so much richness to the card rather than just doing the poppy. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So it's really a great way. Now I, I was experimenting and I did another card this time and um, I, I first inked it with oh, a I love classy that. stripe stencil, just inked. That is and then amazing. I ran it through with this 3D folder of the leaves. Mm -hmm. And then I just decided to put the fun little toucan on it just for fun. And I just had fun making it. But you That's can cute. See, no, you I love can that see one. the images that you can get of texture on stenciling. By doing the uh, by doing that, get a really nice impression. It does, huh? And then I just used some. I had some <clears throat> patterned paper in my stash. So, <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, three D embossing works really well on top of stencils too. Don't be afraid to <clears throat> to try it. Let me get a little drink here. Uh oh, my camera looks like it stopped. What happened to my camera? Okay. okay. Now but I'm showing you his host. Let's but see I'm if this actually works now. There Yay! we go. We're back. Oh, it's nice and purple. It was. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move right along if that's okay with everybody. Is anybody sure. really lost or are we all right? No, no we're good. Okay. I'm working right I'm along. Good. I just okay. double embossed and whatever. Wow, awesome. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay. Oh, wow, one, that's pretty. Can you see the background? Yes. It's, it's stencil, very, yes. very yes. light gray. And so there's no big magic thing to this. It's just that I, I took the dye for the flowers and kind of figured out ahead of time where I wanted them to go on my panel. And then I, I took that off and then I, I put this at an angle and just used really light gray ink and made it a, um, can you see it in the background there? I love it. I love yeah. it. Yes. 
just so that you can ink a stencil as just a, a background for your focal point. So it kind of makes the focal point pop off more instead of just being on white. Mm -hmm. so it's That's a of, gorgeous card. Oh, thank you, honey. This, um, it kind of ends up being the same idea as where we dry emboss the arrow pointing to the focal point on the mm -hmm. yellow right. one. But this one, you actually ink it lightly to make it to make it just have that subtle uh, background for the for the focal point. And I use the narrow brick stencil on that. Okay. This one, remember before how we did like the poppy where we inked through the stencil and then we did the 3D mm -hmm. a couple minutes ago? Okay. Yes. Well, this one, I decided what would happen if I did the 3D first and then I inked it. And that's what happened. So I used, oh, cool. the, I used <clears throat> the simple plaid 3D embossing folder and I ran it through on my white cardstock. And you can see it on the back. This is the this is the emboss side of the thing of the of the thing. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. This is the embossing side of that folder, and it looks like that. But I wanted it to be kind of the subdued part, so I used the deboss side. So see how these lines are are etched into the cardstock, where on this side, the lines are up above the cardstock. You're right. So you can use either one. And I decided for this, I wanted to have the lines not sitting up because I wanted the stencil to go over the whole thing. And if I did it on this side with the stencil, where the, where the lines are sitting up would take the ink, but the little squares wouldn't because they're sitting down. So I wanted the flat side of the 3D folder. So it would all take ink. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I feel surprised yes. it took with, the, with, with the ridges. Um, well, you know, you could do it that way too. I was just for this, I decided I thought that it would look better if it was all flat. But again, this is all just experimenting. This is all, the reason I'm even showing you these things isn't because I'm the wizard guru of this it's because you just get in there and try lots of stuff and see what works and what doesn't work and don't be afraid to have it not work so but you know try it doesn't it look all flat see what happens but it doesn't I mean, look all flat when um where you've stenciled it doesn't look all flat doesn't it go down no. it goes down but it takes the ink with it down it's not as deep of ridges as this side that's what i was surprised about okay yeah see it's not this has really deep recesses and over here yeah. it almost even feels flat it's not flat but it's close enough to flat that the whole thing inked and i did okay. it with, i did it with this one the feather one this stencil. It looks really nice. Like the way that looks. Doesn't that look I really love it. Cool? It's awesome. the kind of part I have to do it to believe it though. <laughs> <laughs> I I just really um this is one I want to experiment with more. And again, it's one I wanted to make two samples of to see totally different um embossing folders and ink and stencils to see what a different look would look like. But right. I didn't have time because of my whole personal stuff. So it, it isn't done. But I'm going to try it and see. I, Very might make, I might make I it. I love good. that look. I do, too. I really do. And now we're moving on to heat embossing. And we all know I'm pretty sure about how to heat emboss. So this is one. Whoa, that looks really fuzzy. But it's not really fuzzy in real life. It looks like I have embossing powder still on there. Or the, you know my anti-static powder, but I can't see it in real life, but it looks like it on the camera. See how fuzzy that is right there? Yeah. But in real life, I can't see that at all. Weird. That's wow. Anyway, I use black cardstock. I used, um, you know, an anti-static tool. And then I used the, um, the heart stencil and stenciled it and gold embossed it. And um, and voila, I think that looks so great. It's Very much great. better in person than it is on your camera. That looks all sort of fuzzy, but it's really black and gold in person. So 
So you can do that with pretty much any of them. I used it with this, this stencil. And then I'm, I'm speeding up here. Mm -hmm. I, so that, this one is just using the embossing ink and totally just heat embossing it direct. This one, I inked the background and then I laid the stencil on and heat embossed it. Now, if I were to do this over, I would use a darker color ink in the background. It looks a little bit washed out and it particularly looks washed out in your brochure. It's, it's brighter in person, but I think I would do a darker ink color to contrast to the, um, to the heat embossing, but I did this one in platinum and it, and it looks pretty, it looks pretty good, but I inked the background first on that one. And I used this layered, it's called the layered medallion. medallion. Yeah, layered medallion somewhere. What did mm -hmm. I do? I guess I did it this way. Anyway, so that's the one that I used on that. And all I did was ink the ink it with colored ink. And on the first one, on this one, we didn't ink it at all. We just did it on colored background with clear embossing ink. This one I did the inking the background and then um, did the clear embossing ink through the stencil and then and then did that. So there are two different ways, just variations of the same thing. Okay, on this one, what I did was it's a layering stencil and this was before I decided to split this. So, so this is our one and only, I think, layer, actual layered stencil. And this is the Sweet Spring stencil. I used, I used Pixie Spray on it, so it's a little sticky. But what I did on this card, and I don't like the colors, but I'll tell you what happened with the colors. <laughs> I picked out a, a um, you know how Penny said to share the things that you dark, you, you know, you're not happy with? The process mm -hmm. was great. The colors look horrendous, but I finished it just to show you. Okay, so I did the first layer of stenciling, which is this one in, uh, I used a dusty pink um, background and I used kind of a dusty pink. I think I used rouge for this layer of the stencil. Now that looked really good. But what happened was I just, this is heat embossing through the second layer of the stencil. So I did this with the ink with rouge. And then I put the second layer of the stencil on and layered it up. And through the second layer of the stencil, I put your the embossing ink. So far, so good, right? I could have done it in gold or anything, but I had this new, um, you know, the distress uh, embossing glazes? Yes. Okay, yes. that are kind of transparent. Right. And I thought, I haven't used this yet. I know it's not an all new product, but I thought, how cool would it be to have the second layer be kind of that transparent look? So I thought, perfect time to try it. So I did, and I did the one that's called Rose, something Rose. Tattered. Uh, yeah. And guess what? It's orange. <laughs> oh, no. So, oh I mean, it's really orange. It turns out looking like this. And so my nice dusty pink and my nice little rouge dusty pink ink all of a sudden had an orange glaze on it. So I'm really not happy with it. But if we get- But the technique is there. The technique is here. Thank you so much, whoever said that. <laughs> the technique is here. So you can see what it looks like to emboss um, the second layer of a layered stamp. And I actually really like the transparency, the translucency of that, but the color is so bad. And so, I mean, I'm sure it looked pretty if you, that's the color you were looking for, but it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted that dusty rose look and it just totally was not that. But anyway, so I left it in there just to say, no, I don't like this card, but the technique 
looks really cool. It really does. So I want to try it with a different combination. But does everybody see how that works? Very nice. Okay. And I've been dying to try the glazes. So that's a nice yeah. warning. <laughs> and so what I would say is do a sample on some kind of scratch cardstock first and see what color mm -hmm. it actually turns out. Because, Very good. Um, because that's, I just used it straight on there and just went with the name and I was kind of in a rush and I was real sorry I did that. Okay, so we did heat embossing on the black with the gold. Then we did heat embossing um, on the one where I inked the background in purple and did heat, metallic heat embossing on top of that through the stencil. And then we did that one where we did heat embossing through the second layer of a stencil. And now some of you have seen this card because I did this uh, for an all new blog hop. Can you see how the background has a different pattern in it? Mm -hmm. Here the yes. blue. I wasn't happy with how this turned out just because I didn't think the color combination was very good once I did it. But <clears throat> what I did, and I did it on this card too, which I'm so much happier with than this card. Can you see how this has two stencils on it? Mm -hmm. It yes. has that narrow brick yeah. stencil in the back, and then it has the castle motif stencil. This one, the butterflies is a stencil, and that blue one in the back is the elegant swirl stencil actually. So what did I do? This is super cool. It's like a resist. It's like when we do uh, resists with things. Very cool. On this one, I stamped the castle motif stamp, which I really love, in a dark gray. And I then you clear emboss it. So this is why it's uh, in my heat embossing section of the class. OK. You, you, use, you leave the stencil on it after you ink it. And you use your embossing clear ink on top of it. And then mm -hmm. you use clear embossing powder to clear emboss your, your stencil. Okay? Right. With me so far? Okay. Yep. Then you take that stencil <clears throat> off and you put your background stencil on. And you ink your background stencil right over the top of everything. Mm -hmm. And then because you've clear embossed your pattern, you can take a rag afterwards and wipe it all off and the ink doesn't stick to this pattern. So then Very you nice. have the background all the way around your pattern and you've got your pattern from two different stencils, but they don't, they're not on top of each other. Very nice. So I love this technique and that's what I did on this, but there's so few spaces, it's hard to see that these are clear embossed. These are a, these are a butterfly, um, an Altenew butterfly uh, stencil, but there wasn't enough space back here to make it really show up. But so maybe just a smaller pattern for the background. Yeah, and this was the first time I had done it. And so I wasn't happy when I did it, but I'm really happy with this one because They're it beautiful. has a lot more space around everything. And it looks really cool having those two patterns together through two different stencils um, and yet not overlapped like the ones that we first looked at at the beginning today, right? Your, but, your butterfly card though, the, back, the background makes it look like movement. Yes. So it's very nice. Does it? Take, look again at your blue background on the butterfly card. I like this butterfly card. Mm -hmm. I do too. But it looks like movement, which it makes it look very nice. Well, you know what? That gives me a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. I told my husband, I'm embarrassed to put this on a, on a blog hop. <laughs> but no. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, you no. guys. You're way too nice to me. <laughs> we are the worst <laughs> critics of our own work. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, so that was all our heat embossing, okay? We did the gold, we did the ink with the metallic, we did the um, something else, and so it was a layered one that I don't like, the roses. And then we did the, um, this last one with the two layers with the clear embossing. So now we're moving on to alcohol markers. So 
Here's card number one with alcohol markers. What did I do? I took this stencil and I put it on some, this was me experimenting again. I put it on some patterned paper, the red and white stripes. And what I did was I just traced through a lot of the hearts that are on here. And I left the little stars alone and everything. I just did selective hearts. And I started by using a like a fine line black liner and and just trace through it. And then I filled in the hearts with an alcohol marker. And then I thought, because I wanted it to be an example of being able to trace straight through with a pen or with an alcohol marker. And then I didn't like it looked kind of dull. So I ended up just taking it overnight and putting some of the um, glossy accents on it. Can you see it's, it, they're raised and they're shiny. See there, now you can see it. I put some glossy accents on the heart. I love that one, Sandy. And then, um, and then I did that same thing on this. I, I, I used the um, alcohol marker, the ruby red, and then I, and then I used the glossy accents on all of that and then put it behind a, a heart cut out. But Do you put the glossy accent through the stencil also, or does it come out oh. that nice by hand? No, I just did it by hand. It, like. it worked pretty, pretty well. Very so, nice. So this was an example of you can just use this for tracing, right? You don't have to ink through it. You can just use it for tracing on something and, you know, experiment. And I've never done this type, this pattern before, but I really like the way it came out. So, uh, you know, I, I have fun preparing for these things because I just experiment. <laughs> and just let myself just kind of do my own thing and see what happens. Oh, okay, this that was is another really nice card, Sandy. Oh, thank you, honey. This is an, the one that I used this this dye for the masking. And some of you saw this before on the alcohol marker um, workshop. So with this one, I, I went all the way through it with alcohol markers. And then I um, took alcohol spray and sprayed it. And it gave me that. And then I took, when it was dry, I took the mask off and it gave me this kind of a modeled looking, but you can do it with any, any um, stencil, but, um, the thing is with this, when you spray alcohol, you, when we were talking earlier about using the pixie spray, when you spray alcohol, you really, really, really need to take precautions and make sure that it doesn't get in the air because it's not good to breathe. So you wanna do it outside or you wanna make sure you've got enough ventilation. I have an overhead fan and then I have a little fan clamp, clamped to my desk that I use when I use spray and then I use my mask. So, um, Regular alcohol ink doesn't get me, but spraying alcohol is not a good thing. So, but it turns out looking really cool. It just is kind of a, almost a watercolor look, but with alcohol markers. So another- Like a painting. Yeah, it's kind of like watercolor painting, you know, that you do. Yeah. do it's, it looks like red cabbage texture. What? It looks like red cabbage texture. I don't know if you call it something it different. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does actually. I never thought of that. I love red cabbage. Okay. This one is another experiment that I was like, this might be too wild, but my husband said, oh no, I love that. I'm like, okay. Okay. So this one, these stripes here, I did through this stencil, which is the stripe builder stencil. And what did I do? Remember when we did our alcohol inks and we did pouncing? I took this on top of the paper and I used my, this applicator with the felt on it, not with the um, inking one, but the felt. And, mm -hmm. and you, can either, you can either squirt alcohol ink on here and then wet it. Or what I did was that I wet it with 99% uh, alcohol, I put, some inks out on my glass mat. And then I just swiped it and picked up the alcohol on here. And then I just pounced like that. 
through the stripes and it came out see it almost looks like it almost looks like watercolor also mm -hmm. I, used a, I used a a bright like a fuchsia a purple and a turquoise so it gives you this other really neat effect for a background. And do, you use, do you use the um, like the Upa paper to do the alcohol? No, this is, is this is on cardstock. Oh wow. wow! This is on white cardstock. Um, so because I'm not blending the inks and wanting them to run around. So for this, because I'm not letting the ink get all over the place and run into each other, it's better for this if it does kind of absorb into the cardstock. I use thick cardstock though. I use like a hundred and ten ten card. One ten, Nina. Hmm. Was it one ten, Nina? Yeah. So and then I'd never used this dye, so I just thought, well, what the heck? It's kind of wild and crazy, and I'm just gonna try it. So there you have it. I thought Very it was enough. a little bit strange, but like I said, my husband, who's my biggest, you know, cheerleader, <laughs> he's like, oh, no, that's great. I'm like, okay. If you say so, honey. <laughs> okay. So we're getting there. The next one is spraying through the stencil with spray ink. Okay, so what I did with this, give me one second here. I've got to get up and get my, well, I don't have it right here. But you know what ink I'm talking about? The Altenews ink? Yeah, it's like one yeah. of these, but it, it's the, the turquoise one. Yeah, right? right. The antique gold one. So what I did was I got out my spray box that I showed you earlier, and I put my cardstock down in it with this, with this tape to it. And then I just went about a foot above it and sprayed through the stencil. So it also, and it has a little shimmer to it. So it also gives you kind of a nice little watercolor shimmery mm -hmm. look to it. I love the organic look with things like that. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, it, it just gives it texture and it gives it um, <laughs> Dimension, you know, I, I use the antique linen 3D uh, embossing folder on the background here. I don't know if you can see the texture on it, but the whole thing on this card is just kind of the texture makes the card. It's not complicated, mm -hmm. but it's it um, it really looks neat. So very nice, very fast, right? Doesn't take much time to just put the stencil on there and spray it. My biggest problem with these sprays, it, first of all, you have to shake them really well until you hear the, the beads shaking in there because it needs to mix. But my biggest problem is getting an even coating without having big blotches. So I find that the higher up you are, oh. and if you, move, if you move your hand like spraying like this from up high, it's more even. And if I have blotches, I have a, while the stencil is still on there, I have a paper towel and I just use the edge to kind of dab up the blobs. Mm -hmm. Because getting an even coating is really difficult, but using those things I just said, up high, maybe a foot, moving your hand across so it doesn't stay in one space. And then, you know, just tapping it with a paper towel where you see that the ink is blobbed a little bit and it'll turn out good. Sandy, I'm glad you touched on that because that's my one gripe with all to new sprays is I just get, you know, big, big blocks of it. So I do too. I'll, I'll try let, that. I, I just heard something from Tim Holtz with a lot of his sprays. Uh -huh. He was showing he was showing, he said the same thing you did, Sandy, to make sure you hear the balls going so that it mixes mm -hmm. it well. But he said it was very important to shake it side to side, not up and down, because you can create create a mess inside the sprayer, and then that can happen. Oh, so shake wow, that's a great hint. Side to side. We'll have to try that. That's great. I'm glad you heard that because it's frustrating. 
you know, it's just frustrating. But in addition, in addition, you how hard you push down on the sprayer will give you different types of spray. If Uh you just gently push it down, you might get big blobs. If you press it, like Sandy said, farther out away and you press it all the way down, it'll be a finer spray. Thanks, Penny. I will try that too. I think maybe practice, I've been, maybe I've been too see. hesitant and thinking if I spread it, do it too hard, it'll be a, a mess. So maybe right. I need to press it harder instead of lighter. Jim I, Holtz- I just love it when we all have tips like this and we can learn from each other. I just love yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. I love Thanks, that. Jim. Sprayer <laughs> designed for that a little spray splat, a fast spray, a mist. But they're not all designed like that. Tim Holtz has designed it specifically to do that. Well, now this one is totally different. Check this out. Wow. What in the world did I use to make this? Oh. (laughs) Well, I used these. These are the kaleidoscope stencils. And what I used, again, breaking out of the Altenew world here, I used Nouveau... Shimmer powder. Yeah, oh, those are fun. Yeah, so I just put the I put the stencil on my paper. I did use watercolor paper for this, and I just with the stencil on there. I just and I used the pixie spray, and I just you know how you do you just kind of tap it, and I used like four different colors just to see what would happen, and I just tapped it and then sprayed it with. A mist of water and just let it sit and do its thing and there you have it wow. I mean, it's not for everybody but it's it's that really pretty fun. cool i think it's beautiful wow. and then what i did on the surface i don't know if you can see that it has a sheen to it can you see that sheen there uh, kind of has a shine to it um mm-hmm. i use I just a little joy. i see yeah. it on the joy it well, reminds- the i did out of glitter paper but right in here, can you see the sheen on the surface at all? No, just a little like bit, that. Sandy. Now yeah. you can see it when you go. Yeah. Can I go back yeah. and forth like that? Yeah. Well, what I did, I thought it looked a little dull, so I I um, took a took something that we're going to use for the next time. That's actually a clear, um, a clear gloss. It's transparent, and I just used a sponge brush and and did it on there and and it looks really um it looks like finished and uh it's very smooth and it's clear and transparent so we're going to play around with that that more is for decoupage yeah yeah but there's different ones and so we're going to try different ones next time right right along i'm not going to say much about this but i tried i tried some um pigment powder on here and I did copper pigment powder very Um, nice it turned out okay I don't use that very frequently and I think it needs some help but it's a good idea to you you can use that through your stencils and um have, have is anybody really familiar with using that very much like like perfect pearls yeah, no. I've used hints for how to use perfect pearls. If you if you ink through a stencil with embossing ink to make it to make it sticky, right, right. Well, I and then I would suggest you use a small finger dauber, like you okay. have small finger daubers at the beginning, um, like like these. Yes, and and get one just for Versamark ink or embossing. Oh, ink. yeah. Yeah. And then have, you know, even if you label it, it'd be good to label right. it because you won't see otherwise. But use that and that will get into a lot of the nooks and crannies of that if you kind of dab it down and, and blend it around a little, but you hit, you can't fully blend it in the same manner. You want to just make sure it's heavily on there and then put your perfect pearls over it, over especially it. your colored perfect pearls, and then brush off all the extra with a dry brush. Now, that's what yeah. I did. 
Okay, that's what I did because again, I don't use them very frequently, but I knew it would work well through the stencil. But what I had happen to me here, and which was a total another failure on my part, but it looked good enough for you guys to see the idea. Yeah. But after I did all that, the powder kept coming off. See, this was Come originally off. coated, that leaf right there. It was originally dark like that, but then when I took the powder to go off, it it just all brushed off. Was that because I didn't have enough ink on it? I would say you didn't have enough ink. Yeah. Um, the other thing that Jennifer McGuire will tell you to do is to, um, after you've brushed off the extra, is either spray it with a fine mist of water or with a fixidant. Uh, and that will keep the, the perfect pearl powder in the place you put it. That's what yeah. happened, I think, because I really did have a good coating of ink on. So okay. I have a feeling because I didn't do that. And then I was messing around making my card. It just all started kind of smearing around. And yeah. I was like, I thought I did it right. But I really like this card. It's just a matter of this didn't, didn't well, stick. The that way makes that it look it like it's a, a distressed look. It oh, does. Right. <laughs> we so, wouldn't have known any different, Sandy. Okay. <laughs> And if you had tried to do it that way, you probably wouldn't be able to. Well, there you go. Thank Looks you. nice. You guys, you're so funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I like the idea and I really like the metallic um, look. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try it again and see if I can do that. And I will spray it afterwards and see if that helps. I, I wanted to include it because I knew it would work well, but this is not an area that I have a lot of expertise in. And this one I super like, but then I kind of was kicking myself afterwards because, okay, this is mixing a background stamp and masking with a stencil. And here's why I would, and I use this stencil, okay? But why I was, why I was kind of kicking myself is you can't tell that I masked that at all, it's stripes. I mean, if I had a floral on there, you, you could maybe see where I had hand masked it. But here it's like, well, I could have just inked those stripes. But I really did mask a stencil and mask <laughs> off these areas. <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, the concept is use a background stamp that's small pattern like that, and then take a stencil and put it over it with and mask off certain areas of the stencil and then just ink the stencil over the background stamp. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I had used, you know, if I had used um, you know, something like um well, let's see, like this over it, and then had inked off, had masked off certain stripes, and you'd see the floral in the stripes, and you know that I had actually masked it, but with stripe stencil you can't even tell that I did but that's the concept right so pretty the card background, the background stamp and then you mask whatever you know you want of a stencil and you have a double layer that's not two layers of stencil but it's a layer of a background stamp and a stencil very pretty card Does that make sense yep okay so that's where I yep. use that dotty that swiss dot background stamp on this one. I really like this card too. And yeah. complimentary colors, right? Yes. Yellow and purple. Yep. Okay. okay we have a question, Sandy. We have yes, a question. Sweetie. It is Did you spray the alcohol ink or alcohol, which I heard is not a safe thing to do? Okay. What about what did what you sprayed on the alcohol yeah. ink? I sprayed 99% alcohol, all right? And that's why I said, you do not want to be breathing that. Wear a mask. So, you know, I have my medical rated mask. I have two fans going, blowing it away from me and various other safety measures. And I use my, and I use my, my box. If you can go outside, it's even better. But sometimes, you know, like around here, when it gets to be five degrees out, I don't really feel like going out and doing it. But I don't spray. Sandy. I'm not a big fan of spraying alcohol, but if you you can do it, but you must take safety precautions to do it. 
Sandy, can I bring up something real quick? Sure. Um, just a reminder to everybody that has little fur babies, spraying this stuff might not hurt us on some of the things that they put out on the market, but you've got to be aware of your pets. Yeah, that's a very good thing. Right. Just an afterthought, you know, just to think a little bit about your babies. <laughs> I, think that, absolutely, like, I think that's really important and I think it's really wise. I don't like spraying anything. But, you know, no. you do once in a while, but you have to just be very cautious. And I do, in my room here, I have some glass French doors and I, I close them so my dog won't get in. Right. So for that as long reason, as you aerate, but yeah, around and the I, pets. I open my windows and I have my fan, two fans facing that way that spray that way. And I wear my medical mask until it's all out of the air. But um, Right. Their you know, noses are so sensitive compared to ours. Truth. That's the truth. Okay, we're almost done and we're almost on time. Okay, so this one, does anybody know what I did with this? I like it. <laughs> yeah, love it. Nice. Okay. Ink removal. Yeah. You ink it up really kind of heavy. You, you don't want it to be really pastel. -y. You want it to be kind of bright and dark, darker inks. So you ink blend the that you put, I use the wonky, what is it, wavy? I started to say wonky grid, but it's the grid one that's all got wavy the lines grid. not totally straight. Mm -hmm. You put this over it, and then you either take a baby wipe, a really kind of wet baby wipe, not just damp baby wipe, but a wet, wet or a wet paper towel. And you just, you know, push it through the stencil and it takes some of the ink back off the paper. So you get this kind of textured look and the more you do it, the more ink comes off. So it's a personal choice, you know, how much you want to have take off. But I just kind of like the textured look. I didn't want it to look um, too light and dark. You know, I just wanted that textured background feel, but you can take off as much ink as you want that way through a stencil and have that kind of pattern on it. Nice. Um, so that's something else you can do. Okay, yeah. we're almost getting there, believe it or not. Okay, so on this one, I used this Simple Shapes cover die, and I used, what is this, Spring Garden stencil. And here's what I did. This one's kind of weird too, but I just was experimenting. So, what oh, cool. I did was I inked this using the mini brushes because I wanted the flowers to be certain colors and the leaves to be kind of this turquoise. So I inked this onto a white piece of cardstock. Then I cut this out of white and I cut it out of a piece of um, uh, match it, you know, like the same color um, pattern paper. And I have this left over. So there a piece of white paper around here. You can see I'm going to make another card out of this. Oh, I love this card. That, that's mm. out of the um, that's out of the pattern paper. So then what wow. I did was just for fun, I glued the white grid onto the stenciled background. And then I took yeah. the little, a, lo a lot of the little triangles and shapes out of the pattern, out of this one, out of this one. I took a lot of the triangles and stuff and glued them back into this one, like an inlay. Mm. I, I just wanted to try something completely different. Oh, you are cool. so great. So great. That's, and my, so creative. that's my favorite card. <laughs> tonight <laughs> really gorgeous yeah I love really, that's really really love beautiful the soft colors of that too yeah i i just well what i did was what i what i did was i went for looking for a piece of the um the paper that was kind of a soft watercolor look and was in and that i liked the colors that would go with this stencil and then I matched the inks to what I felt would go with this pattern paper. Um, 
So, and those flowers behind are just awesome popping through. Yeah, I, I just looked springy to me. And I I don't know. It was oh, just, pretty. It was just me doing my experimenting what if thing. And you, you did know, good. <laughs> that works. You guys like this. And my husband really, really, really liked this. And, awesome. you know, at the end of the day, I'll put out like the two or three cards that I made. And then he'll come in from whatever he does. He, since we've been retired, he does stained glass. So he's out there in his area <sighs> doing stained glass and I'm doing cards. And then he comes in and then he looks and I'll have laid out my two or three cards. And then, he, you know, I, what do you think? And so I had a couple of these cards that I thought were so cool because I didn't make them in order. And, um, this one was with him and he went right to this and said, that yeah. is a cool card. And I'm like, what? So, it is. Yeah, so but it's like stained glass. You don't think about that with his stained glass. Does that not look like well, that's stained true. glass? That's true. There you go, Penny. That's <laughs> why he thought that. Very astute on your part. Anyway, I wanted to show how you can use cover dyes on top of stencils and mix the two together. And then cool. I think we've got two or three left. This one was also for an all to new blog hop that was on the newest release of the kit, the creative kit that's the roses one. It's these roses. And I wanted to do something different. So I just cued, got my, um, my color scheme off of this pattern paper. I just wanted to do something different. But the reason I'm using it in here is because this is a stencil. It's this stencil that came with that set. Hold on, I'll hold it up for you. It has three words on it. So this is the hello from that. But what I wanted to show you is, say this is my piece of vellum because this is on a piece of vellum that's about that thick, that wide to cover that whole thing. But what I did, if this is vellum, I turned it upside down. This is the back side of the vellum. And then okay. I turned this upside down and inked it backwards, mm. right? Oh, right. Then there's no smudging. So right. there's no smudging, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not on the front of the card. And so when people touch it, it doesn't smudge. So I inked awesome it backward tip. so that when I turned the vellum over, it's in the right direction. There's no ink on the front of the card. Nice. The only thing you have to make sure is that the, um, because I used regular inks, this is not alcohol ink. This is regular, you know, regular dye ink. ink. Yeah. Just be sure that it dries. I mean, leave it out a long time to dry before you manipulate it to put it on the card. So once it's dry, you can turn it over and put it on your card. I attached it with some doubles, the double-sided adhesive, um, the sheets. So I cut it the same as my, as my width of this and put it on the back and then just put it straight on. So it's really attached to the card, but I did not want any ink smearing on the front. So that's what I did. But you have to remember if you do a word, You've got to do it backwards on the back side. <laughs> <laughs> so that when you turn right. it over, it's right side up through it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It I turns it down as well. It turns it, the color down as well, doesn't it? It makes it more pastel. It makes it more soft. Really? It makes a soft background. And I wanted it to be soft. And that's why I did it that way. And I was looking for a way to use the stencils that were included in that set. And, uh, but you know, you could do flowers that way too, couldn't you? You could do mm -hmm. yeah, stencil. Sure could. I just had this example already done, but I mean, you could use any stencil you want and do it on the back of vellum that way and then turn it over and put it on a card front and have it be really soft floral. I would that's love That's a good to tip. So, so that's with vellum. And then what do we have? Two more? Okay, this one is one a fun card. Thing. And what That's I did cute. Use was I used that Feeling Dotty stencil and I just did some inked panels through the stencil and then I cut my sentiment letters out of the stencil, out of the stenciled panel. 
right? Mm -hmm. So I just took a big panel like this and I did some, I did, I set the, the dotted stencil over the top and I did a, um, a stripe of pink, a stripe of, of turquoise, a stripe of purple, a stripe of blue. My cards are all falling down on the stack. Now it's going to come like <laughs> a hard earthquake coming right to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, and then what I did was I took my, I used these dies. These are one of my favorite dies. They're expensive though, but um, they're the bold alphabet, the lowercase bold alphabet dies. I like using them for this eclipse thing, you know, method where you raise everything up. Yeah. The card like that. Um, so um, I just took these and cut them out of each of the colored panels from the from doing the stencil and then just you know made extra layers of white and I also have a layer of foam in there um, to raise it up so um, and I just put the buttons on because they were dots to go with dots <laughs> but it's a anyway, very cute bright card very cute this and bright. is supposed to be an example for you the fact that you can use any stencil to ink whatever pattern you want and cut large sentiment Letters. out of it. Any kind yeah. of sentiment die and, and it will make your sentiments look, you know, kind of fascinating with patterns on them and everything. So, right. Yeah. Um, so that's another way to use stencils, just plain stencils. And then last but not least of our plain plain stencils. I used, um, on one of them, I used the Elegant Squirrel stencil and the other one I used the same roses that I said I hated the orange on. So this one, okay. this is watercoloring through the stencil. Oh, pretty. So um, I just put the stencil on there with Pixie, with Pixie spray on watercolor paper it's not supposed to look all exact. It's supposed to look kind of um, muted. Yeah, textury, you know. And right. then I sprayed on the end of it. The um, after it was dry, I sprayed the shimmer spray on top. I don't think you can see that, but it does have kind of shimmer. Um, <clears throat> so that's a pretty I, card. It's hard for me to do this kind of card and have it not have exact lines and everything where it's kind of just fuzzy edged um, because I'm such a perfectionist. But then after the fact, I look at it and I think, well, that looks kind of really artsy, you know? Yeah. Not having it be perfect. Um, yes. But, um, and then I use the mod squares on this panel, 3D and just a little strip of pattern paper because I wanted to use the black on there. And mm -hmm. I wanted the black and white to tie these two to tie in with that strip. But anyway, um, and what I did nice. with this, I did not use watercolor paints. I used my inks and I just put them on my surface and I used a water brush. You know, one of the brushes that have water in them. Oh yeah. You know which ones I mean like these? Yeah. Like this. You know, I just used one of these and just washed right. my brush out and use regular inks. I hardly ever use, I'm not a watercolorist and I have watercolor paints, but I hardly ever use them. I just, I use my ink most of the time. And then last but not least is this one, which uses that same rose stencil. And this one, I actually did use real watercolors. I used the metallic watercolor um, pan set and just thought, what would it look like on black with if I did the um, that rose stencil? And so there you have that. And that's why pretty. watercolored right through the um, through the stencil. So Andy, um, yes. One of the other things that you can do with that same sort of thing is take a three D embossing folder and emboss it. And then use your metallic inks to color it. And it, it really stands out a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing you could do 
is you could dry emboss the stencil onto the cardstock so there's a raised panel yeah. from dry oh that would look stencil cool and then paint it i mean there's really today's today's workshop was all about taking regular stencils not the fancy ones and not using you know all the here i'm going to change my um i'm going to change my camera back let's see if i show up do i show up yes your face that you're uh not you personally your photo. But your, it's your, your photo the picture shows up there you go here i am okay so the purpose today was not you know, not even doing coloring stencils, the new coloring stencils that are out or the layered stencils or the um, uh, using embossing paste and all those things, um, just using straight, plain stencils. stencils and all the different things you can do with them because they're cheap compared to everything yeah. else out there, right? I mean, let's face it, stamps are expensive and so are dyes and, and but, yeah. but stencils are pretty inexpensive. And I just wanted to give you an idea of lots of ways to experiment with them and to be creative with them, just plain stencils. And once I started going and realizing, wow, there's all these ways that I hadn't thought of before, I thought there's no way we're going to get to embossing paste and stuff today. So right. next time, that's what we're going to focus on using different materials and different textures, mediums, um, pastes and glimmer paste and a lot of other things cool. to say, cool. okay, what, um, you know, what different impact can we get? Because one of the things I want to look at is take like the same stencil and use embossing paste and then take the same stencil and use a different kind of paste and a different kind of like a different kind of medium. Like I already made one that I used um, gesso on, white gesso. And right. okay, see the different, how all of these different um, mediums make different textures and different looks. So that's what we're gonna focus on oh. next time. Does that Exciting. sound good to you? Fabulous. Awesome. You, you are leading the way, Sandy. Well, I'm I'm excited about it, and I'm glad we finally got to get together. I'm oh. um, I'm really excited about this Facebook group just because. Um, well, this is going to sound really dorky, okay? But <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just going to sound silly, but I really appreciate you guys so much. And I love getting together with you. And I just was looking for a way that we could kind of touch base on a regular basis and learn from each other and encourage each oh. other. And, um, you know, I, that's just where my heart's at. So I thought, why not try it and see how we can do and just have our own community to just um, use that's whatever awesome. products we want and, and share our creativity with each other and encourage each other. So, so um, awesome. I'm looking to see. I'm looking forward to seeing your ideas and I hope that some of you will take stencils and just go for it and see, oh, what, yeah. see what you come up with, right? And then put it on there so that so that we can, uh, oh, what are you holding up there? Whoa, I missed something. Oh, look at, oh my goodness. Look at that, that's beautiful. Can everybody see that? Yeah. One too. Oh, wow. Very oh, nice. That. You did two layers. See, okay, now you guys, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, you have to, so that you can post those, okay? I awesome. have. That blesses me I so did. much. Oh, and oh, look at that. Sunday. Um, oh, pretty. Cool. Oh, my goodness. It'll be well, done I'll in a, to a question <laughs> earlier. You, you were asking about cleaning the stencils. Uh -huh. um, I've, just, I've just used the deco wallpaper and the fine tulle on this and um i used the deco wallpaper first with the purple and i left it a few minutes so that stained but i used the fine tulle um and i, I just used a stamp cleaner but i used it straight away stamp and it's cleaner. all come off oh, shoot. Awesome. Stamp cleaner. thank yeah. you naomi thank you did everybody yeah. understand what she said yes we yeah. were talking about getting the pixie spray off of stencils how yeah. does the pixie spray come off when how do you get pixie spray off well she was saying that she tried the stamp cleaner, her stamp cleaner on there and the stamp cleaner worked 
So that's okay. awesome because oh, I yeah. had alcohol and stuff and it doesn't work well. And I, I didn't know what to do. Oh, look at that card. It's not glued down. Oh, that's he, pretty. He didn't emboss that? No, that's with this, this paste. The glimmer? Oh my gosh, I've got to try that. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Oh, I, and post Christmas cards, everybody. What you gonna yes. do? <laughs> I I'm I told you I'm experimenting with these folded cards, and um, and um, my friend Anne Marie is gonna be doing a a. What am I trying to say? An all to new workshop on them, which I didn't know. She only told me when I posted a folded card on the Facebook group. So I don't want to duplicate her work, but I am gonna do some. Uh, videos on these folded cards and they're really easy and they're really cool looking. So um, keep oh. an eye out open for that because I'm going to put it on my on my YouTube. So I'm not going to see you except on Facebook before Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything. Right. Have, a wonderful, oh, have a wonderful happy holiday. holiday. You too. Well, Sandy, I want I want to take a minute and thank I'm, you, Sandy, because I know you've done all this for us being not feeling well and having your daughter ill and everything and just the handout alone the time that you put into making these cards i agree and putting the directions yeah. and everything we yeah. appreciate you sandy you know how much work yes, that is do. you're a great teacher thank you yeah. honey i i love all of you i want to help you and i and i appreciate having the honor to be able to do that thank, thank you, you thank so much, much. Okay, so Sandy, yeah, I too want to thank you for your handout. It is so chock full yeah. of techniques. I sat in bed the day I got it. I sat in bed and read it and reread it, trying to picture myself doing all of this. Yeah. And I was just blown away by the creativity and the amount of techniques that are in this one handout. I, I want agree. To put a little idea in your head that I think someday all of all that you've put into so many of these techniques, you should publish. I agree. I would, I would buy a book. I would buy a book of your handouts any day. Absolutely. And it's more than I'm finding anywhere. And I'm I'm pretty good at you know, trying to flush out resources. But the way you lay it out, like the expert instructor and educator that you are, your head, the way that you lay out instructions in a minimalist fashion, but clear so that someone knows how to do it step by step. Yep. It's just tremendous. Tremendous. It is. It is. Gosh, you made me cry. I, I printed, so I printed oh, mine oh, out. As soon as I got it, I printed it out, Sandy, and I'll always <laughs> have this to fall back on. That's how, I mean, that's how wonderful. So she's right about you thinking about publishing some of your cards and some of your teachings. Yeah, well, thanks very much. The only thing I've ever published and I have published is my dissertation for my <laughs> PhD, but it's 250 pages that, uh, yeah. Well, how <laughs> much more is my copy? Oh, <laughs> this would be far easier to publish, let me tell you. <laughs> in your future. <laughs> oh, I, I can't, I can't say thank you enough. That's Thank you. We really you're awesome. You're speechless. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but awesome. when I retired from being a dean and from teaching college, I and I moved to Alaska, I thought my days of teaching were over. <gasps> nope. No. No. <laughs> from it. Yep. They've only never restarted. We're the lucky recipients. Thank you, Sandy. Absolutely. Well, thank you and Merry Christmas to all of you. That's the best. Uh, Merry Christmas. Christmas. When's, when's class two going to be? Um, It's going to be, I'm trying to do yeah. them at the end of the month. So it'll be the end of January. So it'll be a couple months. Okay. That's but, fine. Um, You've got time you, to rest. Yeah, I need, I need a rest and I need and I need to do my own Christmas cards and, oh, you know. Absolutely. And I won't be um, here that time, so you'll have to, if you want to co-host, you're going to have to get someone else because I'll still so You're be going on your cruise. Oh, Penny, right. tell people about this situation but, she's in. Oh, um, my gosh, how I'm jealous. Well, you, 
I mentioned earlier when you were went off and came back that we've been teaching bridge to kids, but um, my husband teaches bridge on cruise ships also. Oh and wow! Oh wow! So that's the we don't get big, a free cruise, but we get a reduced cruise, and um, so we have a trip in January. And yeah, my kids said, are you sure, mom, you want to travel the world at this time? And well, they have so many safeguards. Uh, it's a Viking cruise line. It's a high end cruise line. Yeah, we've been in there before. You have to be vaccinated. You have to have testings done periodically, et cetera. So there's not a lot of places you can go that everybody's vaccinated. So right. this is kind of our feeling. We're going to Hawaii, and then we're going down to French Polynesia and some of the islands, Tahiti, etc. Wow! And then oh, terrible. Back to LA. So awesome, I'm Penny. Gonna, um, Do you need someone to carry your luggage? <laughs> well, actually, we went on a different one, and for two weeks we did not have luggage. So if you want to carry it, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway, I love you. it's, oh, it's not hello, everybody what am i gonna take with me in the crafting line because i won't have a whole room worth of crafting stuff <laughs> so, right that's a challenge <laughs> yeah Penny blossom stamp well, a we, bunch of things and take your markers yeah we just got oh, it we just got an rv a small one and uh, oh, we took it out one time, just local here. We've got so many places within a half hour of where we live that are just amazingly beautiful mountain places and stuff. So we took yeah. it out just for a trial there. And um, next summer, we're well, like before the really heavy duty tourist season up here in probably first of June, we're going to do a, a loop through interior Alaska because Co the first year we moved here, I had eight surgeries. Don't even ask. It was a nightmare year. And then oh, wow. COVID hit. And then, so we have not seen much of Alaska, even though we've been living here for three years. <laughs> so next summer, we are going to take a driving trip um, around our own state and see some really cool things. So um, we've awesome. seen, uh, I mean, I think we took probably six or seven Alaska cruises when we were in California. We've seen the whole panhandle area but not in mainland alaska so um right. anyway i'm in the same boat it's not a very large it's not like we bought a class a huge monster rv so i don't know what i'm going to get to take with me or anything <laughs> take your people i don't know because what i'm going to do but i a watercolorist oh i'm terrible at watercolor i bet yes, and sandy that's what i've been trying to decide <laughs> if i take that with me and i do it will that make me better because yes. i'm practicing yeah yes. Maybe. yes you know i bought that ultra new color uh watercolor book that they have and yeah. i haven't done anything with it because i'm afraid to ruin it <laughs> That's a good it is beautiful. I'm not. Uh, yeah, then, look how beautiful that looks. I'm afraid to touch it. I think it's then just stamp your it. own. Stamp your own because you know you can restamp them. Just stamp your own sheets. That's true. I, I don't know. know. I'm just it's telling yet. you, it's going to be a long time, if ever, that I do a watercolor. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> I'll rely on you, Penny. Oh, look at how that looks. Oh my gosh. Ooh, ooh. I, I, I appreciate it dark here and fade out. Oh, that's gorgeous. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. That is beautiful. Yes, it is. I don't think there are any rules. That's with beautiful. Yeah, you keep that up there. Just I don't do anything. Naomi, what did you say? You know, I said, I don't think there's any rules with watercolor. You can be creative however you want. Uh, so, uh, exactly. Yes. Uh, well, I, think, I think I like your idea, Naomi. <laughs> That's my problem is that I've always been a color within the line rules person and trying to break out of that is just hard. A much. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, you guys, I, I got to go, but thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And you. I have a wonderful you. holiday, everybody. Yes, everybody. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, I'll Sandy. Thank you. The link thank you. For the video when I get the video from Zoom and all that stuff so that I can post it.
um, okay. on my YouTube. Okay. But in the meantime, I I mean it. Don't you hesitate to put stuff out on that Facebook page because I want to see. Oh, I'm going to because I created a couple of things okay. today. Cool. We'll okay, sweetie. We'll I do. love you guys. You Thank have a great you, day. You too. Okay, bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. 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 bye.